Columbia Care and Cresco Labs before they made it to the altar, decide probably wouldn't work out. And I, someone actually put something up on my forum saying, hey, you didn't like it in the beginning. What do you think now kind of thing? And the truth is I didn't like this deal at all. I couldn't figure out the valuation that they came up for with Columbia Care. Two billion. And when we look at acquisitions like this, you ask the question, what is a company worth? If you were going to acquire a company, how are these deals put together? In the case of Columbia Care, there are th in, in all companies, there are three things we consider. Market capitalization, total debt, cash. Market capitalization for Columbia Care is about $185 million right now. Total debt is about 700, I think 750 million. So you're looking at about 900 to 950 million right there. You would take a look at how much cash they have and subtract that number. Nonetheless, you're looking at about, let's call it 925. To me, that's how much Columbia Care is worth. The, the market capitalization, you have to buy out those shareholders. Even if you give them your stock, you're doing so at a valuation. And in the case of Columbia Care, currently they're trading at about 185, uh, 185 million. So that would be the market capitalization that you have to buy, and you would do so with Cresco's lab in that particular scenario. But there's also the debt. When you acquire a company, you don't just buy out the shareholders, you also assume the debt. And so uh, enterprise value for Columbia Care is about say 925, 950 million based upon total market capitalization and total debt. Now, all Columbia Care was going to do or Cresco was going to do was pay out the shareholders and assume debt, which would have been about 925 million. But these guys came up with a $2 billion purchase price. And I kept, I sent out, I don't know how many emails to a couple of my guys asking the same question what am i missing columbia care themselves not even ebitda profitable if you can't get there yet how are they going to add to the bottom line of cresco and this poses an interesting philosophical question if they're not ebitda profitable yet let alone net earnings profitable which neither company is net earnings profitable but cresco is ebitda profitable what Cresco could have done is assume the entire operation of Columbia Care, pushing up their revenue. Then, and in a long-term scenario, put their products on Columbia Care's shelves and have them distribute those products, which would have increased revenue even further beyond acquiring that revenue. Then Cresco could have looked at every single employee at Columbia Care working in the back office and say, every one of you is duplicate. We have all that. And they could have slashed SG&A costs right there. That would have theoretically added more revenue to the top line and revenue to the bottom line. Uh, Tilray and Afria, they promised us about $80 million in cost savings by doing that merger. They ended up a little over... It, it, in a year's time, they ended up a little over $100 million in cost savings, which would make that deal a pretty sweet deal. Tilray, of course, is moving forward. Their margins are improving. Stock just jumped up about 35%. Just what was it yesterday? So in that scenario, that Tilray acquisition made sense. But with Cresco and Columbia, how did they come up with the $2 billion? Because of that, they would have to have paid for that $2 billion, which means the dilution from Cresco would have been too high for current Cresco shareholders. Now, they put out a sweet little note saying, we just don't feel it's a good match, whatever their note was. Basically, they got their butts sued. Everybody was screaming, you're out of your mind. They almost immediately got sued by shareholders. I think it was a couple days later. Nonetheless, to me, that made sense as a Cresco shareholder who you're about to get diluted but to the tune of two to one on the acquisition from that. 
oddly, Columbia's stock kind of moved up higher. Cresco's didn't fall. So it really kind of was an interesting moment because Cresco would have been paid more money, but now they're floating on their own and the stock went up. That was an oddball thing to me. And it represents something that's going on within cannabis stocks. The market discounts everything. We all know the information. And the market, theoretically, is always right. But when you look at these stocks, where we are right now, a lot of these stocks are so significantly undervalued, the market isn't right at all. The market's been burned over and over, and short sellers have come in and just pounded and pounded and pounded. But we have an opportunity that we're probably going to see in about a month and a half, maybe about six weeks towards the end of September, early October, where there is a new dynamic happening within the industry. And this is likely to very well shift all these stocks. So given that, when we look at these valuations, it's if someone argued, yeah, we see your point because market valuations are too low. Okay, but here's the thing. You're paying for that stock in a market valuation that is too low. So I never really bought into this deal. I just didn't see the numbers. And now the deal doesn't work. Fine, moving forward. Both these companies, now Cresco is EBITDA profitable. And I'll update that information uh, in the next, I think, two weeks. I don't know when they're coming up with their financial statements, but and I think they're back to back day after day. I am putting out as much content as I can because I believe that the shift is happening real soon. And because of that, a whole bunch of people who have not considered these stocks at all are going to be looking for content. And I want to make sure they know which ones are good and which ones are not. So at the very least, there's a rush into those better stocks. I'm one of the few that are putting out content on all of these stocks. Some of the guys out there I know are doing content on the bigger name stocks. So it's, I'm throwing some more out there because there's some actually profitable companies that are OTC traded. Some guys have never heard of because their market valuations might be 25 million, 10 million. I'm sitting on them because they're profitable companies. Nonetheless, I'm going to keep getting this content out there to you. I wanted to respond to that forum post regarding this, and I thought a video would be a great way to do this. In about, what, two weeks, I will update both Cresco and Columbia when we get new financial statements from them. We're starting to see, I've been seeing people have been posting to my forum all the news releases for companies. Uh, we're seeing new record, new record, new record for revenue. It feels as if we're turning a corner. Make sure you hit that like and follow button. We'll get there.